Ngayong araw mga kapuso, kasama po natin today uh, Arsenio Balisakan, uh, Professor Balisakan, Dr. Balisakan, who is our incoming uh, NEDA chief. But by the way, he also served in that capacity in the past under President Aquino uh, in other capacities in the government. And by the way, outgoing kayo commissioner uh, sa commission competition, right? Uh, uh, incoming Secretary Balisakan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Rich. Yeah, so just to clarify, palestering uh, kayo sa competition commission. No? So maybe we'll talk about that also first before we go to ano po yung trabaho ng NEDA. Kasi alam natin yung mga ating mga kabayan, kabayan medyo siguro familiar sa foreign affairs, sa finance, etc. Pero alam din natin, napakamahalaga po yung trabaho ng uh, economic planning. no? Uh, so we want to talk about that more and saan kayo papasok in that sense. But before that, of course, you have been in charge also of the Competition Commission. I'm quite aware that there have, there have been some major cases that fell on your lap and you have tried to make sure that monopolistic practices or alleged monopolistic practices have uh, been tamed so that we protect the interests of the consumers and economic health. Uh, Secretary Balisakan, can you a little bit tell us about uh, yung uh, mandato nyo sa uh, Competition Commission? What have you learned? What are the things that the Filipino people should learn about and what do you think your successors uh, should do as you transition to your new role? Okay, uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, uh, can, a little context, Mona. No? Um, the, uh, the, uh, it, it has taken several, um, uh, uh, almost a, a quarter of a century no, to uh, pass a competition law in the country. Um, and it has been long recognized that the lack of competition uh, and the uh, very uh, inclusive character of our uh, economic development uh, has prevented the uh, growth from being uh, uh, shared by uh, by everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite exclusive. And as a result of that, uh, uh, hindi lang sa uh, di uh, distribution is not uh, fairly shared, but also uh, the ability of the economy to grow faster uh, and to sustain that growth was uh, hampered by uh, by that lack of uh, competition you know? uh, and so only a very small sector of our population was benefiting from that growth so uh, competition policy is recognized by many observers no? uh, economists uh, as well as non-economists alike uh, that uh, uh it this has to be a, a, uh, a an important pillar you know a, a uh, pillar of our uh, economic development regime moving forward uh, so uh uh pagpunta ko ngayon sa NEDA dadalhin ko yun yung yung event that, that also background because uh, apart from the many other constraints that are facing our country particularly our economy competition is clearly one no uh, of course, uh, the lack of competitiveness of our industries, the, lack, the uh, poor quality of our uh, economy to generate quality jobs uh, has to do with, uh, with other things, like the cost of doing business, poor governance, uh, and so on. No? So uh, it, uh, the work of NEDA is essentially to uh, uh, formulate the the development strategy of both the near term, the medium term, and the long term uh, for the country, and advise the president uh, and the NEDA board, uh, 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 which is chaired by the president, and uh, on these matters. No, um, so in essentially the major economic decisions uh, are uh, are shepherded by NEDA to the cabinet uh, and, and approved by uh, by the president. Uh, what is known publicly about NEDA is its uh, approval process of big projects, no? but that is only a small part, uh, though quite important part of the work of NEDA. We monitor the, and, and evaluate the performance of, uh, uh, of our, our economy, um, like the GDP, we measure the GDP, for example, through our Philippine Statistics uh, uh, Authority. Uh, we uh, uh, evaluate uh, the, the uh, efficacy, efficiency of, uh, of programs and strategies uh, and policies and recommend to the president for any uh, uh, changes in such policies. And more importantly, and this is where I would want to bring in again to uh, NEDA is to, uh, uh, to, to get this planning process, this, this, this development process, strate strategic planning for development 
uh, nationwide. No, um, as you know, uh, Chair, the, the uh, uh, nearly sixty percent of our GDP is just in Manila and neighboring areas. No, and uh, obviously the potential of the economy is much more than that, it's especially across the. Uh, the regions in the Visayas and the Mindanao. And so we want to make sure that this uh, the, the growth in the leading regions uh, are um, uh, are felt and are and are, are, um, are cascaded you know, uh, to uh, the lagging region so that uh, uh, growth will be truly inclusive. The, it's the, the point here is that the outcomes of uh, of development are equitably shared. Not necessarily the uh, concentration of production, because obviously some areas need to uh, to grow faster than others simply because of their advantages, geographic or otherwise. But the benefits of that growth must be shared uh, 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 equitably, and, and uh, that means that uh, our uh, various areas need to be connected efficiently. And uh, ayun so yun ang uh, first. Uh, uh, description of that ano uh, so kaya balis akan um of course kami mga taga UP kilala namin kayo bilang uh, dun sa background niyo sa agriculture agriculture economics development economics uh the so incoming president Ferdinand Marcos Jr also said that that was one of the things that you discuss a lot uh, during his time as governor of of Ilocos and that now as the president of the Philippines he looks forward uh, in terms of tapping your expertise in pushing for agricultural development. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? How did you become such a prominent figure in the agricultural development sector or economics? And any background you with President Marcos in the past that you think will help you in terms of coordinating the agricultural development sector? And sorry to also say this, bakit ito mahalaga sa ating ekonomiya? Dahil I think there's a big misconception out there that, oh, agriculture, pang ano na yan, 20th century na yan, 21st tayo, dapat knowledge-based economy, information technology. Why is agriculture still very important for Philippine economic development? I think that's a very, very uh, good question, Richard, because there is a very... Um, misunderstanding uh, uh, um, of the role of agricultural development in the development process. No? Uh, but let me start with your first question of where I am coming from. Uh, I started as an agriculture uh, specialist. I, uh, I, I, I completed my undergrad in agriculture, uh, but my interests then were more on the, you know, uh, Asking questions like why are our farmers poor? Why is there so much poverty? Um, Bakit secretary? Bakit agriculture? Is it your family background that that influenced that decision or interest? Well, it, it is. My 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 parents were initially uh, rice tenants, uh, and we grew up from uh, from uh, in agricultural communities. Uh, and batak, when I, batak, no? yes, uh, no Solsona, it's in, in the easternmost part of Ilocos Norte. Right, uh, right. Uh, but then eventually, when I got to college, I received a scholarship, uh, uh, and that uh, was a scholarship for agriculture. So <laughs> that's how I ended up uh, in uh, in Batak. Uh, uh, but then uh, my interest is really on broader development issues as I. Um, went through uh, to college my exposure with so many uh, uh, fora and, uh, and and you know traveling around uh, uh, rural areas and so when i went to graduate school i see increasingly shifted to uh, initially to agricultural economics and eventually to full uh, to development economics <laughs> economics in general so that's how i ended up uh, uh, looking at this uh, uh, um, uh, agriculture. No, so my interest really is on development, uh, yeah, economic development. But uh, but the uh, the role of agriculture in the development process is so misunderstood. And if you look at uh, uh, any successful countries uh, that are not initially, you know, um, uh, a city state like Singapore, uh, you need a very robust uh, uh, agricultural economy to succeed in in. Uh, in manufacturing and in services and the overall economy. And the reason is there is very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a large part of your labor is initially in agriculture um, and these are unskilled, semi-skilled. Uh, 
and you need to uh, get uh, employment uh, created uh, outside of agriculture to ease that uh, that that uh, uh, low wages created by that uh, dependency uh, you know so much dependency of you know, the bulk of your of labor force in agriculture uh, yet the competitiveness of your uh, uh, of that uh, fact of that uh, other of the other sectors of your economy, economy depends so much on the productivity of, of agriculture because if the productivity of agriculture the, uh, uh, with the rapidly growing population uh, food prices are likely going to be uh, to be high, and when prices are high, uh, the the wages are high. Even uh, uh, even as the, the economy is able to absorb uh, excess supply of labor, you know. So even before you take off, you're gonna be already hit by high wages, not because of productivity, but because of very poorly performing uh, agricultural economy. So uh, not to mention, now, uh, secretary, sorry for cutting you there. Also that. A lot of small uh, industries or infant industries in our neighboring countries, their initial market were actually mga farmers na major prosperous na, diba? So exactly, you create yeah. a domestic market for your infant industries. So it actually directly also help your manufacturing sector to move exactly, up. Exactly, exactly. Apart from that domestic uh, market that uh, 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 that's a potential for growth that uh, uh, is uh, encouraged by a, a well-performing agricultural economy, you also get the the rest of the economy uh, uh, becoming more uh, efficient and more uh, successful in transforming into higher and higher uh, uh, labor productivity uh, areas no? until you become and uh, and that will allow also the economy to become competitive uh, now uh, uh, outside of the uh, of the national uh, markets you know uh, so. Uh, that, that's how import, important it is. But the other important thing is, is agriculture is where the bulk of your poverty is initially. So when you can address that, uh, 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 that stagnation of agriculture, low productivity in agriculture, you've got a lot of poverty reduction uh, uh, happening. And that's what you see in, in uh, uh, successful industrializing economies around the region, starting from China to Indonesia, that to Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, everybody of these country, uh, countries get their, their poverty reduction coming from a well, a robust agricultural economy and that fueled also uh, industrialization uh, eventually. And so the, this uh, uh, overall role of agricultural development in the entire development process is often ignored. And, uh, Bakit, and Secretary, is it because of the influence of certain schools of thought, certain technocrats? Santay na kulang. Bakit lahat ng kapit bay natin parang nagfo-focus sila jan? Vietnam, Thailand. We're not even talking about Korea, Japan, of this world. But for some reason, parang pinabayaan yung ating agricultural sector. Yeah, I think I think we got so stuck to this notion of uh, that uh, the only way we can uh, we can uh, uh, grow is uh, is to uh, you know to uh, to to get the economy participated in by. Filipinos only. So you have that Filipino first policy. Uh, uh, and, and then uh, while you are into, into that policy, preventing uh, investment from coming in uh, uh, to compete with our, with our uh, local industries, you also did not, uh, you were also not attending to the uh, problems of low productivity in agricultural areas by, uh, you know, uh, producing the, the, the appropriate uh, technologies, uh, the, the new varieties, the, 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 the infrastructure that's needed, the, the linking of rural areas to uh, peri-urban or urban areas so that uh, flow of goods can move efficiently. Uh, so there are many, many of those that were learned by our neighbors were not uh, applied to, uh, in, our, uh, in our own shores. And that's really regrettable. Uh, what about... Um, uh... Uh, Secretary, the aspect of land reform, because we know a lot of our more successful neighbors had successful land reform too, which helped with household farming, a degree of efficiency in the agricultural sector, not to mention inclusive development down the road. Many would argue, political scientists, social scientists, economists, that the Philippines land reform has not necessarily been a poster child. Uh, as, a, as a kind of economist in, in coming near the Secretary, how do you look at that issue? 
the 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 land reform program was not uh, bad per se. It was uh, it was the way the program was implemented. Uh, it, that was you know no other country in the world that implemented the land reform the way we did. We took uh, almost a half century, you know, to to to, to and still ongoing until this business, you know. Uh, that uh, led to this uh, uh, level of, of uncertainty in, in, in rural areas. And in the meantime, you crippled the uh, land markets in, in rural areas. Because what, what happened was, uh, we, government took in big lands, all right? And, um, uh, and what was expected is to subdivide those lands and, and uh, parcelize them. Uh, uh, complete the titling and the distribution to the farmers. That latter part, the titling, the the, uh, the you know the subdivision uh, of the species, so that the farmers could get their title, was never really completed. Uh, and that was the a big part of what we call uh, areas distributed to our farmers were collective titles. You know, the, and the collective titles are not acceptable for the banks as collaterals, for example. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, also um, uh, land land reforms uh, uh, beneficiaries could not uh, use their titles for uh, for for collaterals uh, or and cannot even uh, transfer it to the more efficient uh, farmer. If, you know, uh, so the land market was crippled as as a whole. So unlike in other countries where you have very uh, active rental market, where uh, the, a productive, a highly productive farmer would rent some lands to increase the size of its, you know, its farming. Uh, that is very difficult to happen in uh, our um, agricultural areas because of this prohibition. So, so you I, have I, to do a lot of coordination then with DAR and Department of Agriculture, I suppose, Secretary. Yes, no? yes, and I think that DAR should have done. To, eh? oh. Oh, but but the DAR should have done its work. Uh, before uh, uh, long ago and and uh, and the land reforms have been completed in 10 years just like what uh, happened in uh, in many other countries not not uh, 50 years and until now we are still trying to uh, to complete the uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the land reform so that's part uh, of, of, the, of the problems in, right. in in rural areas and we actually have been talking about this uh, with the incoming uh, 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 managers and I have managers on, on what to do with uh, right. this problem because it's obviously if if, if, if it, it remains to, to you know this problem remains to be a uh, uh, a major constraint for reviving uh, uh, productivity in rural areas. Uh, Secretary, can you tell us a little bit also about your relationship with incoming President Marcos because he mentioned that you have very great relations working relationship going back to his days in, uh, in in Logos as a governor? And how do you think that will be helpful in terms of coordinating? I mean, it's one thing to be a secretary. It's another thing to be a secretary who has the full support of the president. And a president who also understands your mandate. Hindi lang nilagay ka lang dyan dahil lang may CV kang maganda, di ba? Well, yeah. Um, you know, as I said, I, I came from Ilocos Norte. He was my governor. So I ended where... While I was all, uh, uh, during the time uh, a professor at UP, uh, I had had the, uh, the occasions of, uh, of uh, going to Ilocos, give seminars, give and uh, attend meetings, and, and so I, in, in those few instances, uh, uh, I met the uh, the governor. But I think the more important uh, meeting that I had with uh, with the, with the uh, Incoming president is when he was already a, uh, a senator, uh, because at at one point while I was at NEDA at that time already, uh, he asked me to brief him on agriculture and rural development issues. So I went to his office and we had a long talk and uh, what needed to be done for agriculture. And I think that stuck to him that that uh, that uh, you know, discussion and uh, and we continued to. To, you know, sort of directly and indirectly uh, uh, have this uh, conversation through uh, uh, his sister, the Senator Aimee. Uh, I had more interaction, longer interactions with uh, Senator Aimee because uh, he she often uh, asked for my comments on uh, 
on certain issues, like for example, like Public Services Act. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, and she, she was the chair of the uh, of Economic Affairs Committee, so the, and uh, which uh, uh, shepherds the budget of PCC, so mm -hmm. the Philippine Competition Commission. So, uh, but way back, even before I joined government uh, in during uh, President Aquino's time, I already was working with uh, Senator Aimee. I helped uh, uh, develop, for example, his uh, provincial income accounts uh, uh, for, for Ilocos Norte when she was a governor. And she was the only uh, uh, governor in the entire country that had a provincial income accounts that allowed her to you know, uh, uh, assess how the, uh, the province progressed uh, uh, year to year, how remittances from uh, Ilocanos abroad would impact mm -hmm. and, uh, and poverty in Ilocos Torte, things like that. You know? So uh, that was a very useful uh, uh, planning and monitoring tool for her government, uh, local government in Ilocos Norte. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Secretary, I mean, I know he's your, he's your principal and of course you have great relationship with him. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about what's your understanding of uh, incoming President Marcos' appreciation of macroeconomic issues, development issues, because uh, I think we had previous presidents, including President Duterte, who were admittedly saying we were not as adept or well-versed in economic issues. But we know that in calling President Marcos, he attended, you know, Wharton and, and Oxford, among others. So perhaps he has that kind of basic literacy in macroeconomics that could help him understand you and your mandate and be helpful to you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, uh, as You as a, being a professor and expert yourself, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh... It's just to be sure, before I I formally accepted the offer, uh, right, right. I had a uh, the opportunity of uh, leveling with uh, 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 with the president to see if if uh, I would be helpful at all, no? and uh, and and indeed uh, what I heard from him uh, was uh, mm. quite inspiring. That he uh, had uh, um, uh, clear understanding of. Uh, what the issues are and what needed to be done. And uh, he engaged us. Uh, we have had a number of uh, two meetings, three meetings already with, uh, uh, with me and the economic managers and uh, how he engaged us, uh, to, you know, talking with about development issues. Uh, right. Tell us that he is very much aware and, uh, and uh, understood very well. At the same time, uh, was willing to learn uh, and is willing right, to learn right. and, and listen to uh, to, uh, to to advise, so that's what I I, I think we at NEDA uh, need because our role is really advisory. Uh, okay. We advise the president on what needed to be done, and uh, uh, through the cabinet. Uh, and uh, uh, if you are not uh, useful in that regard, then you know it, 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 there's uh, no value in us uh, staying there. No. Uh, so uh, uh, that uh, is to me a, a good enough reason to, to say that I, I would like to help. To have the job back, which you had under President Aquino, right? Um, uh, yeah. Secretary, of course, now a little bit more contentious issue. I mean, NEDA, one of the most important roles of NEDA was also approving these big ticket infrastructure projects, including with our international partners, Japan, uh, you know, our European partners. But of course, China was a big issue and we know under, of your you know, outgoing predecessors, Carl Chua and also Padranga, et cetera. There was a lot of, I think, proper scrutiny, some would say, of a lot of these projects that many felt were not meeting the standards that we were looking for. You as the incoming NEDA, I mean, what is your assessment of our approach to approval, assessment and, you know, attraction of these investments and how you wish to move ahead with it? Because gusto ko lang pag-usapan din yung issue ng build, 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 because you had a lot to say on it. But before on that, I want to also understand how you understand these investments from abroad and how we should deal with yeah. them. I, I would start from the lens of knowing what the needs are, what the constraints are. And as I dis described earlier, uh, uh, what is critical is how we see the various sectors in the, of the economy uh, reinforcing each other. Uh, so that growth becomes uh, inclusive and sustainable. Uh, that's what I would like to see. I would like to identify, we would like to have a good understanding of what the, the, these infrastructure constraints are in terms of say connectivity uh, uh, and other uh, uh, issues. No? So uh, 
NEDA, for, for example, periodically uh, um, identifies through um, its uh, networks with uh, regional development councils and uh, the, the priority uh, investment programs, uh, pr uh, what we call PIP, priority investment projects. And these are usually they identify the, 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 the projects, uh, uh, infrastructure projects uh, mainly that are considered as constraints no? to, to, uh, to growth, to local growth and, and to um, uh, connectivity. Uh, and, and there's a long list of that. And so what I would like to see there is that when we approve, when we identify um, projects that are crucial for uh, uh, for development, we start with that list. Uh, and so we would ask to the extent that we will have uh, public-private partnerships, for example. Uh, I would like to see that those are given priorities over unsolicited proposals, for example. Uh, which may, uh, Secretary, can you explain that? Because that I kind of stood out in some of the interviews you've given. Bakit you want to go more to the PPP, which I think it was the preference of the Aquino administration in the past, if I'm not mistaken. Well, well, at this time, at this time, because of the fiscal bind, uh, largely because of the fiscal bind, uh, or there are really three things that go uh, uh, well with the PPP, and why we, in the first place, in during the Aquino administration, we pushed for it. Um, number one is. There are so much development needs that uh, we need to address. So much government uh, resources required to uh, uh, to address uh, the, the, this development constraints. You are talking about infrastructure, you are talking about health, you are talking about education, uh, measures to increase productivity in agriculture, and yet you have very little uh, resources. The 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 our re revenue base, even if you can hope to uh, to to uh, uh, collect e e effectively and efficiently there's just not enough of that if you want to move fast the question is moving fast catching up with our neighbors in in one generation not in you know two or three generations right and that can be done as what uh, has been shown uh, by our neighbors so uh, that means that we really need to uh, complement these uh, uh, revenues uh, from government with other capital sources like of course you have borrowing is another one uh, can always borrow from bilateral and multilateral sources but we do also know that uh, our uh, private sector is awash with capital was with funds yeah their funds are just being invested in in treasury bills in bonds you know so why can't we uh, uh, get those funds redirected uh, by making it attractive for the private sector to uh, to go into those investment areas while mindful, of course, of the affordability issues of this infrastructure to our people and the, and the uh, efficiency issues, sustainability issues. So that's the challenge. Uh, and for us, especially now, given the, the, the debt and the uh, fiscal bind. Uh, yeah, 16 year more, high, more than 60% yeah, of GDP. The more that you need uh, this uh, uh, private uh, investment uh, for public infrastructure. And, uh, and the other reason why I really would want to go in that way is that if you can get this infrastructure, especially in those or in rural urban areas, where they tend to be quite profitable. Uh, so that means they, you don't need to subsidize this, uh, this infrastructure, right? Using government funds. Uh, our our uh, uh, such uh, redirection of, of spending would allow us to use more of the more limited resources of government to address these other concerns, which Health are not education. attractive yeah. for for private sector, I'm talking about the social sector, like uh, health, education, you know, public schools, public well, hospitals. Uh, I mean, this can also be productive, uh, profitable for for the private sector, but uh, uh, because government usually have equity objectives, you want to to help to, to get these hospitals accessible to the poor, uh, free at best. You want to have the public schools available. Uh, you know, things like that. So government has to infuse uh, resources there. And we want to have those more of those resources if we want to have this uh, exclusivity, uh, inclusivity 
uh, advance uh, for it is really what i really would want to see is this this um, expansion rapid expansion of opportunities uh, especially among the low income groups and that you can do if you address these issues of where that uh, lack of opportunities was coming uh, from and that start with basic education basic health basic, you know so human capital no investment right in human capital, capital. Yes. so I, I would really want to to have mm -hmm. that human capital address because i think we must admit we are we are in crisis when, when it comes to right. to health when it comes education to education yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, there you go. So you you, you want you can't postpone this this spending yeah. there, and yet you have very little resources. So how do you uh, prioritize the uh, mm. available resources you have? Secretary, sorry for cutting you there. I mean, you work in the Aquino administration as NEDA, and you're coming into this administration also as NEDA. Now, in in between, we saw some shift in modality from PPP to much more public finance driven. And there were criticism also of PPP, and perhaps it was not as efficient, et cetera. What are the tweaks we're going to see under your second state as NEDA? Now, siguro maayos yan. Because, of course, there's no modality that is perfect. But I think you would agree that there were also some legitimate concerns yeah, that the PPP yeah, yeah. you know, was not as effective too, right? I mean, can you please uh, give your point? Yeah, uh, surely there are. I mean, when, uh, the, when we started the PPP uh, in... Uh, uh, in uh, during the uh, uh, Aquino administration's term. By the way, the VOT was even way before that. No? Uh, uh, it, you know, we were one among the first in the region uh, that developed the, the framework uh, for PPP. We, uh, uh, we uh, made efforts to make sure that the, this, the framework that we are following are best practices. Uh, we brought in... Uh, ADB, uh, for example, to help us uh, uh, with the expertise needed uh, uh, to develop this framework. Yet, uh, of course, Meaning, Secretary, you... no corruption, a sustainable environmentally, fiscally, when we say this, because I think people have to appreciate that Siguro medyo bumaga yung infrastructure development under Aquino, dahil kailangan linisin, kailangan ayusin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, obviously, uh, there are uh, as I said, we, uh, we're just laying the groundwork uh, for PPP, and uh, and despite that, we were able to ro ro roll uh, 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 of many of these uh, these projects. But there are, uh, uh, or we expect to uh, to improve the processes as we go along, as we learn, and I uh, and I rightly the uh, uh, the current ad administration. Uh, uh, so some uh, some problems and we need to fix those like for example the uh, contingent liability issue uh, that has to be uh, to uh, to be uh, 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 seriously taken because you don't want uh, you know if you want as we said we want sustainability and we want to ensure that the future uh, uh, generation is not going to bear the burden of this uh, of this contract but we want uh, all these contracts to be beneficial to society uh, so then the other this sharing of risk is an, uh, uh, you know between the private sector and the government is also obviously a, a something to 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 work on uh, there's uh, no you know uh, 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 um, what approach that is uh, cast in stone but uh, uh, we have to look at uh, how the different uh, uh, jurisdictions different countries have addressed this issue and how we can address that uh, uh, issue in our context so uh, but I, I but um, having seen these problems I, I think the right thing to do is to to, to uh, improve the the, the, the framework uh, the PPP framework rather than to stop it uh, 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 or they emphasize it because uh, there are also uh, disadvantages with uh, for example ODA or uh, uh, or loans as sources of uh, of uh, uh, investment, public investments. No, uh, so we have to look at the you know make, make uh, Secretary, Are you on the same page as uh, Secretary Jokno? Because I, I know you're gonna you're gonna be colleagues again in the Nara capacity. Because Secretary Jokno tends to be very strong in terms of expansionary fiscal policy, even monetary central bank. He's very aggressive. I would even say he's hawkish on build, 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 and all of that. Uh, do you think you're going to be on the same page? Do you have an understanding on that front? Yes, I think I, I will be. Uh, uh, what I would like to see is a continued rapid expansion of the economy. Uh, 
so um, the big challenge for us is even as we see all these uh, headwinds, you know, uh, we should be able to grow the economy respectively. Uh, so, uh, so uh, we have to look at the tools that we have, and I think the 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 infrastructure program, if we move in the way we uh, mm -hmm. just describe it, uh, can can still uh, be an important driver of uh, uh, of growth. Uh, but uh, I think we have to uh, aggressively engage our uh, the private sector uh, in right. this regard, and then um, address these issues and the scarring of the uh, our economy and the social sector. Um, the labor sector, la, no, the labor na sector yeah. you know, the yeah. MSMEs, for example, right. you know, yeah. they were badly hit, uh, and and the problem is that uh, for this sector, it's so deep. once they are out. Uh, it's extremely difficult to get them back. And so unless you government comes in strongly, you know, and uh, a, 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 and assist them get back to their feet, yeah, you you'll be waiting for eight, for for years, decades, uh, uh, instead of uh, in the next two or three years. So that's what we would like to see, and that means really refocusing, retargeting the limited resources that we have, so that we can achieve more with less. Mm. So smart targeting of our limited resources. But uh, I know you have to have your breaks and thank you very much for Qatar. But on this point, uh, before we end, because I want to also discuss about how you look at the stagflation warnings by World Bank. Because it's affecting the war in Ukraine and Russia, affecting oil prices, food prices, China, my deceleration, supply chain problems. So in one way or another, it's affecting us, although 6% growth is something that is manageable. But before even discussing that, I mean, the uh, outgoing finance secretary Dominguez said we need fiscal consolidation. This is what we owe to the next generation. Debt 16 year high, reaching 60 percent. Major, ilan 12 trillion, almost 13 trillion na tayo. So, understandably, we had to deal with the pandemic. But uh, having said that, do you believe we have to, for instance, increase taxes or suspend the VAT uh, exemptions, as Secretary Dominguez has suggested? I know that Secretary, incoming Secretary Jokna has his own ideas, but I want to hear from your side because you're the planning guys after all. No, I I I, I believe the uh, I, in the concept of the, the you know the fiscal consolidation because obviously right. that uh, we we need to do. Uh, 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 that brings me to what we have done during the uh, Aquino administration. As a, there was a very uh, um, conscientious effort to reduce the, to improve our macroeconomic environment yeah. by reducing the debt, the, the fiscal deficit, the current account deficits, and so. So and and that uh, proved to be uh, a, a quite uh, strong ingredient for right. for the sustainability of. of uh, of growth and the confidence of the business community and and, and the Philippine economy then, uh, and the, the the country was able to the economy was able to grow at six point three percent for the duration of the uh, of the administrations, and I would like to see that uh, that uh, we would go back to that uh, uh, lower debt as a proportion of GDP. Uh, uh, but forty percent, fifty percent. Is there a certain number threshold you're looking at, uh, uh, Secretary? Uh, 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 given the the the, the uh, conditions right now, the environment right now, the, the needs, I I would I would think that uh, if you can go back to uh, to forty percent, even fifty percent of GDP, that's still an uh, that's massive still good. Yeah, 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 still, yeah, man, still still up, yeah. Down, as long as you're going down, because that will improve the kind of confidence that our community, business community, will see us, no, and and. Um, but I think what's important at this point is really growing the economy. And I would like to see that that growing the economy can happen even with, more, with less resources if you just know that you know the drivers that you can mm -hmm. you can tweak. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and and so and with respect to increasing taxes, I I, I completely agree with uh, my colleague Ben Jok, no, that we need mm -hmm. to study this carefully. I mean, for example, raising taxes at this time is yep. uh, particularly those that affect individual and suffocate the uh, recovery of business uh, it's, it's not going to really uh, really help uh, especially in building confidence and and generating domestic sources of growth because you you your tax wages or your tax earning uh your uh uh you you you, you reduce uh, consumption which is uh, a, basic, a very uh, you know uh, a basic source of, of economic growth Thank you, Secretary. So on a, on an end note, I mean, 
what should we look forward to uh, under your second stint as NEDA chief? What will be your primary objective at uh, by the time that you are, you're you're going to end, God willing, your term successfully? Ano yung dapat ano yung dapat expect natin? Ano yung maging bago? Ano yung dapat makikita natin in six years down the road, uh, Secretary? Yeah, I, 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 that's a very good question because, you know, I have been uh, uh, um, pitching for, for uh, inclusivity in our society. Uh, you know, we have so many rich people listed in the Forbes uh, uh, mm -hmm. list, and yet we're a very poor country. And that tells you how badly distributed the opportunities are. No? So I would like to see that... that uh, the the growth that there's that we'll see in this administration, the coming administration, uh, will really benefit all. Will you know that that the uh, uh, the the boats will rise with uh, with the tides. Uh, so uh, uh, I would like to see that uh, that indeed your uh, literacy is, is improving, uh, longevity is improving. We, uh, the, the, the poverty and uh, and uh, equality of opportunities uh, indicators of those uh, improving and also uh, another angle there is the, the resiliency uh, i think that we need to uh, focus on uh, quite a lot also uh, on how to make the economy more resilient to to shocks uh, not not to pandemic but also uh, to external shocks no? because we are so vulnerable can you imagine Pandemic caused our economy to drop by almost ten percent. Yeah, in twenty ten. That's the sharpest. You, no other economy in our region has done that. So that yeah. only tells us how vulnerable we are, mm -hmm. and we need to. And of course, when your economy drops like that, it takes several years to go back yeah. to where yeah. you came from, right? And you created so much scarring in the in society, especially for SMEs and the poor. So that is really very very costly, and we need to make sure that the economy. Uh, acquires more resiliency in uh, uh, over time. Secretary, so, you think we have to have some decisive regulatory recalibration, whether in the oil markets, in the food markets? I mean, based on your experience as competition commissioner, uh, we do have some problems, right? With with monopolistic practices, some would even say price manipulation, etc. Without, of course, imputing to anyone. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about that before we close this? Yeah. Yeah. The 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 key is really opening the the, the uh, mm -hmm. removing these barriers to entry that allow a single dominant uh, player, you know, um, uh, exercising so much market power, including constitutional amendments. Do you think we need those? Including things? Including constitutional amendments, mm -hmm. if necessary. Right. I mean, uh, but I, I understand that there are ways of uh, amending yes. the that constitution without really opening it up, you know, which is what yes. some some sectors fear, no? Uh, so, hindi kailangan ng federalismo to make it more inclusive. Well, I leave Sorry. that to the experts. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just, I'm but, not a political expert. <laughs> but uh, indeed, uh, uh, opening up the, the economy to, to more competition, especially to more investments, uh, foreign investments, I think that's the only way for us to go to, to join our rank, the ranks of our rich neighbors. Marami salamat, Secretary. I mean, this was really a thorough conversation. I'm sure mga ating mga kabataan, especially mga audience, will appreciate it. Hope to catch up with you soon, Secretary. As you, of course, I know it transition week niya and busy busy kayo. But I hope we'll catch up even on a better note in terms of your policy and also look at how we're heading under the new administration. Marami salamat. God bless, Secretary. And marami salamat sa ating mga kapuso for joining us today for this very thorough and interesting conversation with Secretary, incoming Secretary uh, and former Secretary of National Economic Development Authority, Professor Dr. Arsenio Balisakan. Marami salamat, sir. Thank you very much, Chair. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye po. Have a good day. Okay na tayo, guys? It's all very good, sir. Ayan. Sige, mag-lunch na kayo, sir. Marami salamat. Salamat. Sa next one.